Oh, sometimes two pairs of safety glasses are better than one, but not always. So, um, what's up everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. So I'm working on this uh, Honda PA52 uh, Hobbit moped. And um, I did get a few parts in. I got the, um, the variable, um, I don't even know really, variator technical terms. Anyway, um, so I did get the variator. I had to because this one is just pretty much destroyed. So here is the new one. I'm going to show you the differences and um, let me see. Let me just dump all this stuff out. Okay, so the differences. Diameter, number of rollers, and the amount of um, thickness here is also different. And the reason it's different is because this has more variable surface area. So this actually moves further and gets you just a little bit higher speed. Um, so this also came with a spring that goes on the back side. And that was kind of what I was going to show you today. But I'll show you this really quick too. Um, so here's the original plate that fits inside the other one. And uh, how this works is you can see bad lighting again. You can see there's a, uh, let me pull it out so you can see it. There's a space between here, and one of these fits right in here, slides up and down this, and that's kind of how the two actually, how the torque actually gets kind of put on this, is both here. Um, bad explanation, but you can see how that fits in there. Now, the other thing is, is this other one fits in there the same, okay, but it did not come with any. Um, pieces here and there should be some on there so I thought well what's the chances I'll take mine and they actually do fit on there the only problem is is I could not get them to fit on those channels because they were too small so what I did is I took a file and I filed the openings here just enough so that they fit in here and so I was able to do that luckily and then um, also, um, I'll get the camera swung around here. That might work. Also, this does fit on here, luckily. But there is an issue. I'll show you what that is. So the inside diameter do actually fit. This fits right on here, perfect. Which is a good thing, because that would have been a bad deal. But, this plate fits on here slightly sloppy. I'm going to make sure I can pull this off. See how much play that's got? Get you a little closer, maybe. See this play? So, if I put the other one on there... No play. And so what that means is that the opening diameter here is a different uh, different size. Okay, so that's kind of an issue. So what I'm going to have to do is probably weld the inside of this just a little and make it fit on here a little better. That's a little too sloppy. So that's the only thing with this kit. And this kit fits multiple different things, so it's kind of uh, why, why it doesn't fit perfect. I, I was lucky to even find this. Um, and it does come with, and actually I'll give you a, a reference number in case you'd like it. There you go. So this does come with, uh, like I said, a spring. Throw it on the ground. It does come with a spring and also the other set of rollers. So there's three set of rollers. It's pretty cheap, let me tell you. And I could pack some uh, some uh, brass or something in the side of these to make them even heavier if I wanted to. But it also comes with a spring, which I'm going to open right now and show you what this spring is for. Again, I told you on my last video that the spring and the rollers actually are what 
determines the output so it changes or it can change the spring on the back side of the pulley um, where the gearbox is at and the other portion the rollers and the centrifugal force changes and you can tune so what that means is I got a I believe a stiffer spring um, I, there's a bunch of custom pulleys pullers to get this thing off come on now I haven't had a problem with you the whole time there we go okay so anyway here's the gearbox put it back in here for reference all right and this fits on here like all of this okay so pretend like this wasn't in here this fits on here like that now the interesting thing is which I didn't have is on the end here there are threads on the inside of this here okay and the tool you're supposed to use threads on here and goes in here and you tighten you hold this portion and you thread a bolt into this center and it pops this off that shaft you can see that shaft right there has a taper on it that taper is what actually holds this in place then once you get this off you can remove this and you're working with the pulley now here's the other bad thing I don't have the pullers for this stuff so this was actually inside here pushed all the way inside here with a nut on top now it also has a taper inside here which gets held on to the taper inside of here okay and then if nothing falls apart you can see the taper right there so what that means is I needed another polar that actually fits inside of this thread and pushes against this center now what I was able to do and I kind of need to put this back up here to show you so what I was able to do luckily if you don't have the tools for this and you're extremely careful I was actually able to get two pry bars on the back side of here and pry against this housing and I was able to pry that off so once I pried that off because I don't have again I don't have the proper tools or the pullers I, I should say pullers not tools well they're tools but so after I did that I actually and I'm gonna have to do it like this without the spring in it let's see there we go so this was in here like this so what it is I threaded this nut on there so I didn't ruin the threads and I actually I used not screwdrivers but I used those crowbars back there and I actually got right here like this and I pried against this and I actually pulled it up see what I'm saying so uh -huh, kinda lucky I didn't want to take this part I was afraid of breaking it but um, it came apart it wasn't that bad now what's inside here ah that's where your spring is at so here's the old spring here's the new spring the wire diameter is definitely different okay um, the length is a little different you can see there I'm not doing a very good job with the camera so there's your length okay and then the wire diameter itself if I can line it up it's different so I haven't actually pushed these let's just uh, oh yeah so this is a much stiffer spring so we're gonna put the put this spring in here and uh, well I guess it goes uh, this way like this 
see if it fits. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, there we go. There it goes. Okay, so this spring, this new spring goes inside here. I may put a little bit of grease inside here, and I will also be cleaning up um, this just a little, kind of wiping it down and cleaning it good and putting a little, just a tiny bit of grease on here because this actually slides in and out of here, and this is an oil seal ring. All right, enough of that. I just kind of show you where I'm at and see where I'm headed. So that's all I got for you. We'll talk soon. Alrighty, so this is free slipping. If I flip this lever back here, and it latches. You can hear it. Oh. Right there. Uh, so I got some denatured alcohol because it's just something I've had and I didn't want to use anything too dangerous or corrosive on this stuff. And uh, yeah, so I can brand new spring in there. There's the old one. And uh, it's <laughs> a lot stiffer than the other one. It's actually really hard to get open and closed compared to the other one. Um, yeah, I wiped this whole thing down a little bit. Just, you know, I'm not really concerned about being it perfect. I'm not going to spit shine this bike, but I did want it to at least wipe it off while I had it apart. So if I get in there with these screwdrivers, I can kind of feel how much force it takes to spring that open. and It's a lot more. So that means the rollers will have to do more, which means probably more torque. If it takes more RPM to get the um, front part to um, close, which would open the back, it means I would have probably more torque. That's a guess. I may be totally wrong. Anyhow, alright, well, um, yeah, I may finish this portion and add it to the rest of this video. This might be installment number three. It ain't new. We'll see. Oh, it's so scary. Not really. Ha <laughs> ha. Whee! What's up, everybody? So this is the ending portion of that other video. This is going to be great footage, huh? I don't even know where to set this. Oh, I'll set it right here. This is the ending portion of that uh, other video I was trying to make. It's only taken me like a week and a half to get this far. But, um, but we are here nonetheless. So I wanted to show you. Um, that's a great shot. Huh? Let's see if I can move this a little bit. So, I was wanting to show you the ending result here. Uh, where does it zoom in at? Okay, so you remember this plate and this plate, they were the wrong sizes. Um, I might be able to just do this. If I can get them lined up, you can see the... Uh, yeah, up there we go. The difference. So basically, that's that loose. This one is pretty well tight. So let me show you that again. So what it is, is this is totally, uh, off completely the wrong size but it's supposed to be a something that's supposed to work for this so I decided I was going to uh, make this a test piece for learning uh, the wire EDM machine so let me see if I can get a good shot of this uh, autofocus is really bad 
Check that out. I think it's just the shadows are throwing that off. So this is actually a, a wire EDM cut. Now, some of you were asking when you saw the wire EDM, like, what's so special about it? Well, in this case, <laughs> look how thin, uh, look how thin this is. So you can see now. Um, this is how it was cut. Actually, that was upside down. This was like this. I was going to film this, but it's really hard to film the wire EDM cutting. So I cut it out like that. So you can see how thin, how thin uh, that little piece that was left over. This piece got cut out first. Then the wire EDM came in, this is the way I programmed, came in, cut around and out and had this little sliver left right there and then it came back in and cut it. I'd probably do it differently next time but um, you can actually see see how flexible that is? I mean there's no metal there at all but yeah that's great footage huh? This slides on there, and this slides on there, and now I have a shim. Now, I'm probably going to have to recut this because um, the measurements that I used are slightly out. So my film is saying I'm out of recording time, so that's it. Just wanted to show you how freaking awesome that was. So, yep, my film is going to quit here. That's it, Russ out. Waiting on parts. I had some catastrophes with parts coming in, so we'll see uh, if I can get that resolved. Anyway, pretty cool. Russ out. See you guys. Wire EDM. Awesome for this kind of application.